So here I've got a, a Cyrus 3 that's got some problems um, and the report with this one is that uh, as you vary the volume control the right hand channel is given some pops and bangs in the loudspeaker. Sounds like there's some uh, DC going on there. Uh, and the owner actually sent a little video along with this one uh, to show what's happening here so let's just take a quick look at that. So there we go, clearly, clearly some uh, DC going on there as we as we vary our volume. And um, so I've got the scope connected to the output. Let's just look at what's happening here. And uh, so as we power up, um, no reaction on the scope as we power up there. So there's no immediate kick of DC. Um, but as we vary the volume, we're looking at both channels here. Um, And as we vary the volume, as, we, as we're increasing our volume here, we start to see these spikes going on here. Um, and we've got a, a sharp negative spike followed by a sharp positive spike. And that very much looks like uh, a DC level um, that's AC coupled. So we've got a, a coupling capacitor and we, we stick a DC step on the input. So you get a transition one way as the capacitor charges up. <clears throat> And then you get the transition the other way as the capacitor discharges. So that's very much what this is looking like. Um, so, something to investigate in this uh, volume control circuitry in this one. Uh, let's just put um, a signal through and we'll check how the signal looks on the two channels. Alright, I've got a signal applied here and I've put them in antiphase here so that we can just uh, see them more clearly, separate the two channels more clearly. Um, and, and you know, interestingly enough, we've got plenty signal level there. Um, we can see the yellow trace. There is a bit of jumping, uh, just as we vary the volume. Just see it jumping every now and again. Um, so clearly, the the amplifier part is working. Um, it's it's just that there's some kick as we vary the volume. Um, and you know, when you when you look at it in this. Um, mode of measurement here it's it, you know it, it's not obvious that there's a problem uh this this would pass your average eye i think um but anyway so we you know we know our all our amplifiers and things are working even the even the volume control itself is largely working um but there's something going on with the dc level there so um we need to open up now and see what's going on so let's get on with that so with the covers off then we can we can see that this is one of the early uh, Cyrus 3 units. There, there was several iterations of them and the earlier ones had this uh, board here um, that does the input selection and the volume control. Um, the later models use dedicated devices for this and uh, it's much more compact. Uh, and so what's happening with this variation here is that, uh, or this variant rather, um, our volume control is actually an op-amp circuit and then we've got our feedback that uh, comes through one of these uh, eight channel multiplexers and it's just it just takes a resistive tap uh, and, and you know your level your gain is defined by that so there's several of these uh, HC4051 devices here the eight channel multiplexers there's there's two in each channel that does the volume control and then there's some other logic devices to do the switching and the like, or analog, analog switches rather, um, to do the switching. So um, we need to dismantle further. Obviously, we need to get this board out, and we're, we'll, you know, we'll make some measurements on our actual volume control circuitry on this board. Um, so let's dismantle a bit further. All right, we've got this this board uh, uh, out and upside down now, and it's connected up so that we can we can pr uh, probe some of the points and make some measurements, figure out what's going on. Uh, and we've got two stages of this attenuator circuitry here, um, and these are the forty fifty ones here and here, and then the other channel is just a mirror image of that. Um, so um, checked all the supply lines and everything, all the obvious stuff. It's all good. Um, and so the the next obvious thing to be doing is to probe here, uh, put our probe on here, and then vary our volume control and see what happens. Um, and so I very quickly found a problem when I when I did that. Um, so if I connect my DMM here, and we increase our volume just slowly, 
what we find is that periodically I get this 0.6 volts on this thing and then uh, this stage is capacitively coupled to the next stage and that's why we get this spike so there's this, this uh, steady DC level here and then it goes it's capacitively coupled so we just get the edge of that and then that goes through our amplifier and that's what's causing this kick so as I say if I if I just keep increasing my volume this uh, level will, will appear and disappear at uh, various stages um, and this happens when our control lines are all at logic 1 so we've got a you know an 8-bit control here so when all of these are at logic 1 we're connected to this tap here um, and this is where we get the problem and um, what I find is there's some DC level in all of these taps which there shouldn't be, this should all be zero uh, so the conclusion from there then is that this uh, particular uh, switch or multiplexer has gone leaky so there's some leakage between perhaps the control lines and some of our analog lines or you know maybe even the supply is leaking somewhere um, so we'll go in and we'll replace that we'll replace that one device for now see if that cures our problem All right, so originally I was just going to replace the switch that we think has uh, gone leaky um, and then go back and replace the other one just as a matter of course but I've just decided to take them all off here so here's a dead part so we've got a bunch of new ones here so we'll go ahead and install these Just get one pin secured there and then we can go through the rest a bit more easily. Right, that's all of these devices installed then, so let's try the board back in the in the amp. Right, so we've replaced that device now and we're all back in the unit uh, so let's just power up and we'll do the same thing again we'll just uh, check the check this point here as we increase our volume and that's me slowly probably about halfway mark there and that's us at the peak so all the way up and down there and uh, no DC whatsoever uh, so that's been our problem then we've had some leakage between either control lines and supply lines and some of these analog uh, taps on our multiplexer here and then we end up with some DC here the coupling capacitor to the, to the next stage is then what gives us that uh, edges that we were seeing on our, our power amp output uh, so that's all good all right, we're all back together then and uh, this is the same measurement setup we had originally um, but this time uh, I've got 100 millivolts per division here and the first time round we had 2 volts per division and we saw that the, the spike went way off the screen uh, and uh, you know so this measurement that we're looking at here is 20 times more sensitive uh, connected up is the same inputs terminated and uh, the outputs are just coming to the scope here and what we find is that uh, as we go from zero volume to the first step you see that we get a little negative kick there and then as you go back down you get a, a slightly bigger kick there that's about 150 millivolts on the peak there um, and that's just going from zero to, to us uh, you know actually having some sort of level here and as we go through the uh, various settings here various volume settings you can see some uh, very very sharp spikes on the scope there some very very sharp edges here and that's just transitioning from one attenuation state to the other um, and you might hear a very faint click in your loudspeaker um, with that um, but really the, the edges are just too fast and too short for uh, you know your loudspeakers to respond to 
And this kind of behaviour is, is perfectly normal then for, for this uh, generation of AMP. And uh, you know, basically, this type of arrangement for volume control, you know, this was the first sort of digitally implemented volume control. Previous generations used the variable resistor, which had its own issues. Um, so this was the first sort of iteration of uh, digital volume control when it's done discreetly. You know, we've used individual components to, to make this up. The later variants of the CIDR3 and the later generations of Amplifier, they used an integrated uh, part. Uh, so let's take a quick look at that. So this is the LM1972. This was the um, device that was used in the next generation of Amplifier here. And uh, you can see that they're making a big deal here. The, the, one of the top features here is pop and click free attenuation changes. And you, you actually can still detect the transitions very, very faintly. But, you know, this is, uh, the, the, they were aware of the limitations of the discrete solution. And so they're kind of making a, a big deal of what you get with the, these modern integrated devices. Uh, so this, uh, these devices were used for many years. And then there's some newer generations of these also. Um, um, so that's what was, uh, that's the story there. So uh, basically everything we're seeing here with this amplifier now is quite normal for this generation and quite acceptable as well, you know, we're not going to notice anything uh, a, a troublesome when we connect loudspeakers to this. Uh, so that's the next stage, let's get some loudspeakers connected. We'll flick through the volume control again and uh, then maybe play some music. Hey, we're nearly done here then. Uh, I've got some loudspeakers connected here and uh, very faint click as we go from zero volume to the first setting here. And then as I go through the range, I can't I can't hear anything. That's all silent up there. Uh, so I'm just going to put the microphone here up to the loudspeaker as I go from uh, a zero to the first setting and uh, just see what uh, comes across on the microphone here. So there we go, I've just done that a few times there, very very faint click. Uh, so all good, uh, let's say we're ready to play some music now and uh, just let this amplifier settle down for a while before we ship it back. Right, so I've got a source uh, connected now and uh, you know these Cyrus 3s, they're still very nice sounding amplifiers here so uh, let's just turn up the volume and we'll have a quick listen here. <laughs> 